Welcome to Ask the Expert, an award-winning daily live show from 8.30 to 9 a.m. to help small businesses. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comments below in the live feed. And if you need any more advice, please join the official Intuit QuickBooks SMB community group on Facebook, where accountants and business experts are on hand 24-7. Now, during the live session today, I will be running a poll, so please do engage with it, and I'll be revealing the results at the end of the show. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I, my name is Ariona. I'm the Managing Director of Majors Accounts. I just want to remind you that on the 3rd of March, you can attend the Intuit QuickBooks uh, virtual event called QuickBooks Connect. The virtual event brings entrepreneurs and small business owners and accountants together to grow, learn and connect with each other. I actually went to my first QuickBooks Connect about three, four years ago now. Um, and I have to say it completely changed my outlook on everything that I was doing, not just for our business, but for our clients' businesses too, using technology and all the different apps that feed into each other. So if you can, please do try and join that. Um, I will be also um, giving um, a session on the day as well. So if you have time, come join me as well. Um, so a little bit more about me. I am a qualified chartered um, certified accountant with the ACCA. Uh, in terms of my educational background, I've got a master's in accounting and finance and a master's in law in international banking and finance. And I've recently graduated from the University of Oxford with a postgraduate diploma in strategic finance. I had said that my studying days are done, but I think um, in life you learn to say to never say never, basically. And at the end of the day, we're learning on a daily basis. So do we ever really stop learning? No. Um, I am also a member of the QuickBooks Accountants Council and a member of the ACCA's UK Practitioner Network Panel and the ACCA SME Global Forum. I've been working in practice for quite a few years now. Um, I started at the tender age of 13, um, working in the family business, and I've been studying alongside working since then. Um, so it's been great in ensuring that my the studies and the theory that I was learning was being put into practice and backed with the experience from small practice. I think it's really helped to get gain a better understanding for our clients' businesses, you know, how they work, how they function, the pain points they have, and to investigate ways to provide solutions for them and to achieve their goals, whether it's to become more profitable, whether it's to grow, or whatever it may be. So who are Majors Accounts? As I mentioned, we are a small family run practice based in South East London. We've been training for the last 14, 15 years or so, and we've been servicing mostly uh, clients and businesses in the SME space. So whether they're individuals, uh, sole traders or limited companies. We've been servicing them in a range of different industries. Um, our, one of our main industries is the construction industry. So all areas of construction, the hospitality sector, so restaurants, pubs, bars, restaurants. Uh, we also have financial services, IT companies, hairdressers, barbers, utility companies. Uh, the list really goes on. So we've really seen almost everything over the years, all sorts of um, businesses and issues and growth and how they can succeed and fail. So we've really built up that experience. Now, since becoming managing director, I have spearheaded and implemented a digitalization strategy with the idea of becoming a paperless office. Um, we are also a QuickBooks online only practice. Uh, so we've become somewhat experts in this space, we believe anyway. Uh, so now everything can be done using uh, QuickBooks online and an array of different technologies that all feed into QuickBooks. Um, so these apps really help to create an elevated experience um, for our team who are using cutting edge technology um, because we're being ahead of the game, not only for ourselves, but for our clients also. And now clients don't need to come to the office if they don't want to. So there's that convenience and time savings, whereas before clients may have taken a plane to come and see us. We've got clients in Ireland, for example, um, and that was due to the rapport that we had built with each other but now you know everything can be done online as this webinar um this live feed is is online so many other things are going that way too um 
and but it allows for our national and soon to be global reach too. So as I mentioned, we've got clients all over the UK currently from Ireland down to the Isle of Wight. And the idea of going digital for us was to bring the client accountant relationship a lot closer. Uh, we do run a family run practice. So treating our clients and team like family for us is one of our core values um, and helps to build an excellent rapport, we believe, with both the team and our clients alike. It helps to also build to provide a more personalized service um, and because there isn't that corporate feel between us and coupled with the expertise built over the years um, of experience, it's helped to um, really kind of ensure that we have a closer relationship with our clients. And this is one of the one of the misconceptions about going digital um, that a lot of people have is that, OK, when you go digital, you're not going to have that human element. Uh, anymore you're going to be talking to a computer well that's not the case actually what we've done is we've given ourselves the time now by using technology to speak to our clients a lot more than we did before and actually become the finance finance director for our clients but without the price tag that comes with that uh, so over the years um, our efforts haven't gone unnoticed so majors accounts have been nominated by the British Accountancy Awards for the last two years in a row for um, Firm of the Year Greater London which for us has been a huge achievement. Um, I have been nominated for Top 50 Women in Accounting Globally and for three awards by the Women in Accounting and Finance Awards 2020. Now you know, something that everyone um, has been experiencing um, over the last best part of the year with, cor with the coronavirus, how it's affected businesses, lives, all areas of our lives and globally. We have had a lot of um, going back and forth, you know, being in lockdown, coming out, having half lockdowns, um, all sorts, which I think everyone has learn to live with now and we've had a lot of different schemes um, by the government to help businesses out um, during this period we're now due to have uh, a conference later on from our prime minister to hopefully provide a plan with how we're going to be easing out of this lockdown hopefully permanently later today but this morning i'm going to speak to you about some things which you need to be aware of which we already know about but you need to be aware of um, because they go, they may affect you in the immediate future. Um, so hopefully that's something that you can prepare for. So one of the first things I'm going to talk about is the domestic reverse charge for VAT for the construction industry scheme. So this is actually going to be effective from the 1st of March. So from next week, you need to ensure that you have this in place. There's not a lot of time left. Um, but this new legislation, which is being introduced, it's been introduced as an anti-fraud measure uh, designed to counter to sophisticated criminal attacks on the UK VAT system. So it intends to cut down on what HMRC called missing trader fraud. So this is where companies receive high net amounts of VAT from their customers, but they have no intention of paying the VAT to HMRC. And you will see these often, a company will open, register for VAT, um, do some jobs, charge VAT, and then they will close their companies down. So this is kind of the main reason why this is being introduced. There are some things to think about um, with this. It's going to affect mostly subcontractors. Um, so if you are a subcontractor, please make sure that you are looking into this. So if you're using the cash accounting scheme for VAT, um, you need to consider whether this is a scheme that you really should not be using any longer um, just because of the way that it works, which I will go into a bit further, further more detail further on. And you should also um, consider if you should be on the flat rate scheme um, and cash accounting at the same time. So this doesn't apply to VAT exempt um, supplies for building in the building and construction industry. It also doesn't apply to supplies for, uh, not linked to CIS at all, or for the supplies of staff or workers to the construction industry. It also doesn't apply to taxable supplies made to the following customers. So non VAT registered customers. If you have a customer that's not VAT registered, then you don't need to worry about this element. It's only for those who are VAT registered and they are in the construction industry. 
It doesn't apply to end users either. So that if that's somebody that you're doing work for that doesn't intend to carry on and do further work in the construction industry. It doesn't apply to intermediary suppliers. So who are connected, for example, to a landlord and his tenant or two companies in the same group. And it also doesn't apply to overseas customers because it is a UK um, VAT only. So what this will mean is if you're a subcontractor and you're doing a job and you're VAT registered in the construction industry, when you invoice your customer, which may be your contractor, now you have to break down to show how much of your invoice is chargeable to VAT and the rate, but you don't actually charge it. So you will say VAT charge at the domestic reverse charge at 20%, for example, um, but the amount on the invoice will be zero. Now, this you need to ensure there are a few things you need to set up initially. Make sure your software is up to date. So if you're not using a software and you're doing your own invoices, maybe on Excel or Word, please do look into making sure that you have a um, compatible software that can do all of this for you. You need to make sure you do it correctly. And the way that you submit your VAT returns and the boxes that you submit them in will change. Um, so if you have a software like QuickBooks Online, the feature will be available from the 1st of March. So it will, the software will do everything for you in the background. Um, you just need to make sure that you choose the correct codes. So this is whether you have 20% VAT or 5% VAT. It's the same thing. You need to break, to break it down, but the amount will be zero. You need to consider your cash flow as well. So if you are a subcontractor, you're used to charging 20% or 5%, whatever it may be, and getting that money in and you'll be able to use that money for a short while before your VAT return is due and you need to pay um, your VAT liability. Now you will not be receiving that money. So you could potentially be receiving 20% less than you usually do now. So your cash flow is going to reduce. For contractors, this will be great because they no longer have to pay you that amount um, and they can keep that money in their in their pockets for a little while longer and then they end up paying your VAT liability to HMRC on your behalf. So it works in the same similar way as a CIS. And please make sure you communicate this with your staff and customers so they are aware. Um, so also with MTD, something that is... Um, huge affecting so many businesses and it's been staged over the years um, but it's something that is inevitable so many bit benefits of digitalization are that you know many millions of businesses are already banking paying bills and interacting with their customers or suppliers online and many are already using accounting software so this shouldn't be too much of a change for many businesses but HMRC's ambition is to become one of the most digitally advanced tax administrations in the world with MTD. And this will be a transformation of the tax system to make it more effective, more efficient, and easier for taxpayers to get their tax right. So the next step is to extend MTD for VAT to all VAT registered businesses from April 22, um, because at the moment it's only those that are over 85,000. There are already over 280,000 businesses under the VAT turnover um, threshold who have already joined voluntarily and are experiencing the wider benefits of MTD and what it can bring uh, through digitalization. There will also be MTD for income tax, which will apply from April 2023 for unincorporated businesses and landlords with total um, business or property income of above 10,000 a year. And most businesses will have two years to prepare uh, and test for this service voluntarily if you want to before it does get introduced. I believe that will be from this April that you can join. So how will MTD for income tax work? So you will need to send quarterly uh, summary of your business income and expenses to HMRC using MTD compatible software like QuickBooks Online. Um, there will be an estimated tax calculation based on the information you've provided with the idea to help you budget the amount of tax you're going to be paying. At the end of the year, you can also add any non-business information and finalize your tax returns using um, the MTD compatible software. And this replaces the need for a self-assessment tax return. The timing of the quarterly updates is determined by the accounting period for the business. So for example, if your accounting period follows the tax year, um, you will have four quarters starting from the 6th of April. And if you're self-employed and VAT registered, then you need to consider aligning the reporting periods to the accounting period, as you could potentially end up submitting eight returns. So those who qualify are sole traders um, with income from one business and landlords who rent out uh, UK property. 
Um, provided self-assessment tax returns and payments are up to date and you're a resident in the UK for tax. And you cannot currently join the MTD for income tax if you have any other income um, sources than you have, or if you have payments um, that you make that are taxable or that you claim tax relief on. So I can see the questions are coming in, so I need to start taking these now. So we have a question from Rahul from Instagram, who says, what is an efficient way to present financial data to non-financial staff? Um, so we use QuickBooks Online. They've got a great reporting feature um, within the software, and ensuring your data within QuickBooks is up to date, then your reporting and the reports that you will get from QuickBooks will be as accurate as, as you can possibly be. Um, so we uh, show these to our staff or to our clients because a lot of the time clients want to understand how their business is doing, but they, if you give them a set of accounts, you know, it will just be a whole load of numbers on a piece of paper which make no sense at all. So using these reports, um, we can really break things down. We're able to then extract information, obviously graphs and things like that really help um, users who, um, or you know, businesses who don't understand financial stuff as much as someone who has a financial background. Um, so I think visual graphs and things like that will help any any um, business or non-financial staff. But all of this, as I mentioned, this we use QuickBooks Online currently to get all of this information. Apart from that, if you do have QuickBooks Online, then there are apps which feed into, which connect with QuickBooks, and you're able to extract that information and it prepares it for you in a really pretty layout, shall we say. Uh, we have a question from Raniero from Twitter who says, is the domestic reverse charge excluded from VAT flat rate scheme? It's not, unfortunately. Um, if you're VAT registered and in the CIS scheme, this includes you too. So one of the things to consider is, can you really afford to stay on the flat rate scheme? Um, because currently you're using the, the flat rate scheme in order to um, help out with the amount of VAT that you're um, going to be paying. It, you. It, can be more tax efficient um, a lot of the time. However, now, if you're not getting that 20% and paying a smaller percentage back, then where is your real um, benefit? So you may as well, seeing as your um, contractor or customer will be keeping that, that percentage uh, that they would have usually paid for you, paid to you, you may as well go on the standard rate scheme and claim back the VAT on your materials at least to help that cash flow uh, initially. We have a question from Arlen from Twitter who says, what happens if I am VAT registered but my contractor is not? Um, so if your contractor, who is your customer, they're not VAT registered, um, then the domestic reverse charge does not apply to you. So you will still be getting that 20%, 5%, whatever it is um, from them. So this only applies to those who you're going to be charging who are also VAT registered. So if you have a mixture of clients, then you need to make sure that your um, record keeping is accurate because you're going to have some invoices with the domestic reverse charge and some without. So that's why I would really encourage you to make sure that you're using a software like QuickBooks Online so you can determine which code is relevant to which invoice and then that will work out which boxes um, you know the VAT and adjustments need to go into for your VAT return and liability as well. We have a question from Mayon from Facebook Messenger who says, I've heard that self-employed businesses need to follow the new MTD rules if they have an income of over £10,000. Is that correct? If so, what do I do if I don't know if my income will be over 10 k or not? I just started as a, a freelance consultant last month. So that will, um, as I've mentioned, that will be in effect um, from April 2023. So it's not something that will affect you right now, but this is what will happen um, later on down the line. So you have a few more years um, to kind of figure out whether this will affect you in terms of how much income you will be generating. But it will start with £10,000, but 
I imagine that that will be extended um, for everybody. They're phasing different areas of tax onto MTD. And even when VAT first came um, into effect, it was only for businesses over 85,000. Now it's going to be for all VAT registered businesses. So um, sooner or later, everyone will have to comply with MTD. Um, but you will have time basically um, until 2023 to get everything in order. If you wanted to join a bit earlier so you get used to how it works without uh, any penalties because people will make mistakes initially, this is something that's new and HMRC has, you know, knows that and is aware and hence why they have opened it up for people who want to join a bit earlier just to get used to how it will work and if you do make mistakes, mistakes without penalties. Um, we have a question from Vaughan from Instagram who says, what inspired you to become an accountant? Um, that's a great question. Um, so as I mentioned, I started working as an accountant at the age of 13, not necessarily out of choice. Um, my dad started the practice um, when I was 13 and you know, as a family, it was all hands on deck to try and help out to build this business to you know make something of the stream that he had uh, and vision and goal that he had so i was the part-time bookkeeper at the time um, and i worked every saturday sunday holiday christmas you know any time you could think of i was working and at the time as i mentioned not necessarily out of choice but looking back at it now i think it's probably the best thing that could have happened to me uh, my dad did say i want to teach you what it is to learn the value of money um, and hard work and i think that i've learned that um, and as a result now at, maybe i work too much now but i understand what i need to do to try and succeed and you can only succeed with hard work there's only one way unfortunately unless you win the lottery you know that's another way but chances of that are quite slim so we have to work hard um and that's kind of how i got into accountancy and um, once you're working that often and from a young age it kind of gets into your blood and you can't think of anything else so you know when i got to the age of 18 and i finished my a levels it was a question of what am I going to do now? Um, and it wasn't really a question, to be honest. Of course, I was going to go into accountancy and I started to get my qualifications to be an accountant as well. Um, I did have a dream to also be a lawyer or a solicitor um, from a young age. But as I got older, you know, I made sure that I had my accountancy qualifications first. And I went back and kind of did something um, for that dream as well when I got my uh, master's in law as well. Um, so I managed to spin the law aspect into accounting um, because it was a degree in international banking and finance. So a bit of both, achieved my dream, but that's my story of how I got into accounting. Thank you for that question. Uh, I have a question from Leela from Facebook who says, I am a sole trader and make my living through rent. I've heard that landlords are now required to report income tax quarterly. And when does this start? So this will fall under the um, MTD for income tax. I believe you can start from this April if you want to, but that's not uh, a must. It's not compulsory. It will come into effect in uh, April 2023 it has been pushed for quite a few years now but I I think I doubt that it will get pushed again so you will need to prepare just starting from April 2023 so you have some time as I mentioned you can join the pilot screen um, scheme if you wanted to just to get an idea of how it will work but it's all about how ensuring you keep your paperwork correctly and submitting quarterly and softwares will be able to do that so QuickBooks will also have that feature for you um, to do that as well. We have a question from Musa from Instagram who says good morning Ariana I've just started my self-employed business and want to be prepared for MTD. At the current rate I might just do around 80,000 in the coming year. Would you suggest I register for VAT right away? And also, how does it affect my business being MTD compliant? So being MTD compliant is just ensuring that you have really, it's a way of going digital, ensuring your paper, you have all your paperwork in a digital format and um, it will be submitting to HMRC on a quarterly basis with the idea of HMRC knowing how much you're making um, throughout the year so they won't find out 
a year and a bit later, um, but also for you to get an idea of how much you're going to plan for tax purposes. Even if you don't join the MTD pilot scheme, if you're planning to kind of prepare and join MTD right away, um, then just working in this way, I think it's great for organization for yourself and knowing where you are with the business and where you want to go, uh, where you're going to, or where you want to go going forwards. Um, so that's something that I would suggest you getting prepared for anyway because it, it's information for you and you're equipped to make a change um, and see which direction your business needs to go in. With regards to registering for VAT, so there are a few a few things to consider. It depends firstly, um, if you're making 80,000, you're very close to the VAT threshold anyway, but you have the choice if you want to register or not. So uh, it depends which industry you're in what kind of work that you're doing. Um, there are, you know, if you're in the construction industry and you're working on new builds, for example, then I would recommend registering because you're not going to be paying any VAT, but you're going to be reclaiming. Um, if you're a certain type of industry where you can join the flat rate scheme, so you'll be able to charge 20%, but um, you only pay a certain percentage back to HMRC. This will depend on the percentage, so you could be paying back 8%, so you have a net 12% left in your pocket uh, as a profit, essentially. Um, but if if you can't kind of get an advantage from this, then I wouldn't recommend registering right, right away, although... If you are VAT registered, then when you're charging customers, then um, they will look at you as somebody who seems to be established um, because you're VAT registered. So you may have been around for a while and you may have reached your income pretty quickly. So it's about perception, even though you may have only just started, um, but it can have that benefit of how your customers will view you as a business and trustworthiness so there are a few things to consider mtd i would suggest prepare for that anyway just because it makes business sense with a vat it depends exactly on where your situ what your situation is if you don't have an accountant already i would contact one and they can kind of guide you through whether it would be beneficial for you to do that or not so it all depends on what industry and what kind of business that you have um, so I believe that's my, uh, I think I have time for one last question, uh, from Lena from Facebook who says, hi, Riona, with these new changes in MTD, would you suggest investing in tools that can help me be MTD compliant without any hassles? Absolutely. Um, so this is what I was just saying with, um, the previous question from Musa. It, it makes business sense to have these systems in place now because it's not just for being compliant, but you're able to see what your business is doing and how you can make your business more of a success because you have that insight. Everything is laid out for you. And with that information, you can decide on what your next step is going to be. So if you don't, please do try and look into that QuickBooks as a practice, we use QuickBooks Online and we've got all of the different apps that connect to it, which is making for an amazing experience for us and our clients. Unfortunately, I don't have any um, more time to answer any questions. Uh, the poll results are in. So we asked you, have you pivoted your business in the last year? 27% of you answered yes and 73 said no. Okay, that's a... <laughs> That's a bit shocking. I mean, it can have, um, there can be different reasons. It could be that you didn't need to go digital. You didn't need to pivot because you were able to continue trading. I would have thought not many businesses fall under that bracket. Um, for those of you that did, amazing, because now as we start to come out um, of lockdown, you're going to be able to hopefully pivot back and forth. And you may have realized that you have a new service line as well, which you could keep going forward. So well done to you guys. And um, for those that have said no, consider what the reasons were um, why you were unable to. Um, even we still have time, I would suggest use this time to see how you can pivot your business for anything that may hit you in the future. Because you know, life is such that we're always going to have obstacles. Um, if something similar to this, which may not affect everyone globally, it might affect just you in the future, are you going to be able to change? So use this time to plan and try and implement different things into your business so you will be able to pivot regardless. If you don't have anyone that can help you, an accountant can. Uh, many people think that they can't, but we've got so much experience in seeing how businesses fail and succeed that we will usually have a suggestion at least to put to you. 
So thank you all for joining uh, me this morning. If you have any questions, then please do get in touch with myself directly um, through our website. We have a chat feature. Uh, we also have a news section, which is updated regularly as and when information is released. So we'll be updating that today, I believe, uh, once we find out more from um, Boris later on. And we're on all social media platforms as well. So Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. So do get in touch with me or the team through any of those platforms. Now coming up on Ask the Expert tomorrow is Merle Calvert, who's founder and CEO of Ferillo, which is an award-winning three-year-old tech startup in the business and legal services sector. Tune in to get advice on how to embrace change in your business to scale and for diversity. Don't forget to join the official QuickBooks SMB uh, community group on Facebook and also register for QuickBooks Connect and you can find links to those in the comments. So please do come and join me if you have time. I've really enjoyed answering your questions this morning and I hope you'll have a great rest of the week.